the AOL creep. Way back in 2000, I was a bored 15 year old girl and began exploring AOL chat rooms. I had recently left public school and moved to a new city that I'd never more than passed through, and so I was a bit lonely. I thought it'd be cool if I link up with some people around my age in my new area. I've always been very cautious with my personal info, so I wasn't too worried about anything bad happening. I ended up meeting my boyfriend through one of the chat rooms. Things moved quickly, and I was soon pregnant and engaged. We got our own place. Life was good. We still used AIM to message each other when he was at work, and frequently, we'd also chat with our friends in the chat rooms. Some of my old online contacts would message me from time to time, but honestly, I mainly chatted with people I knew in real life. When our son was about six months old, we moved into a larger apartment. My fiance, Jake, began working long shifts, and so I was home alone a lot with the baby. One evening, I was in a chat with my friend when someone else sent me an IM. I wasn't sure who it was, but she began casually chatting with me, and it seemed remotely normal at first. I was still confused as to who this was, and so she sent me a photo. She didn't look familiar. I continued the conversation because I started to think maybe my fiancé and a friend were just messaging me because he liked to joke around like that. But after a bit of dull, awkward conversation, and my refusing to allow them to view my webcam, this person sends me a photo of a middle-aged man. Confused, I ask who it was and why they sent me it. They gave me some line like, Oh, that's my friend John. Don't you think he's handsome? I immediately knew this wasn't right or a joke from anyone I knew. It was clear that I'd been messaged by this guy all along, pretending to be an another teenage girl. I initially cut off the contact, but after a couple of days of thought, I just was creeped out and actually called and canceled my AOL service. A week or so after this, my brother-in-law, Mark, and his wife, Lynn, moved in with us. It was an early evening on a Friday, and Mark, Lynn, and I were getting some food and drinks ready before Jake got home. I was in the kitchen, and Mark was just a few feet away in the living room with Lynn. We were chatting and laughing when the phone rang. I answered the line in the kitchen. It was a man he greeted me by his first name in a very creepy tone and seemed to be keeping his voice low. I had a feeling in my pit of my stomach that something was very wrong. I asked, who is this? Mark took notice and asked me who it was. He must have noticed a change in my tone because he glanced at me and then went straight into his room to pick up the other line and listen. The man on the phone must have heard Mark because he then said to me, well, I see you have company. In a pretty disgruntled tone, then he quickly hung up. I didn't have a caller ID at the time, so we dialed 69 to get the number. When I called back, it was a hotel in a neighboring city, about 15 minutes away. I asked the clerk who answered about the phone call I'd received, but they informed me that there was no way to tell which room it was placed from. I knew it wasn't anyone I knew. My phone line was only active for a couple months at that point was listed under my name, but i only given it out to my family and a few close friends. We didn't know what to make of it. And as the night went on, it was forgotten. The week came and went. I'd received a couple of calls from blocked numbers where no one responded, but I tried to convince myself that I was simply worrying too much, that it was not a big deal. We prepared for another weekend of hanging out together. Again, Mark, Lynn, and I went home, and Jake was still at work. We needed a few things from the store, so Mark volunteered to go get them while Lynn and I stayed with the kids. Now, the small building we lived in had three apartments on the lower level, side by side, and three units above on the upper level. Kind of like a motel. Our unit was the last to the right on the lower level and the furthest from the parking lot. When you exit our apartment to make your way to the parking lot, you walk down a cement walkway and pass the other two lowering apartments. When you get to the end of the building, there's an area between the desk staircase to the upper level and the building, where a couple of bicycles were stored. This is the only residential property in the area, and the surrounding businesses and offices were closed at this time of the evening. Mark exited the apartment but came running back in just a few moments later. He asked me if I was expecting more company. When I told him no, he told me this. 
When he began walking past the other apartments into the lot, a man dressed in dark clothing with a hood on had snuck out of the bicycle area and began walking towards our apartment with his head down. Once he noticed Mark coming straight towards him, he turned and ran. Mark chased him into the lot, but the guy took off and into the darkness, and he lost him. We all just sat there nervously for a few minutes because we were all thinking the same thing, that it was the man who called me and that the man was the girl from the chat room. I just have no clue how he would have found out my number unless maybe I'd given it to someone previously thinking that they were someone else, but really it was him. I don't know how advanced people's hacking skills were back then and if they could have found out my info through my AOL service, but I definitely regretted chatting away my boredom. After this, we moved to a different town and I never listed a landline number in my name again and definitely never went back into those chat rooms. So yeah, whoever you were, let's not meet. Double Dutch. One night, my girlfriend and I were walking through the suburbs of Dublin. A truck stopped and a guy hopped out. He was acting all friendly asking for directions. He sounded Dutch. Something struck me as odd about the whole thing, as it set me on the edge. It seemed like he was trying to distract us. All of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I spotted another man. He climbed out of the truck and on the other side. He had gone all the way around the back of the truck and was trying to sneak up behind us. I quickly grabbed my girlfriend by the arm and walked straight up towards the sneaky guy. He backtracked really quickly when he realized he had been seen. The first guy was all like, come on, we mean no harm. But he was also talking to the other guy in Dutch. My girlfriend just started running and I followed her. We didn't stop running until we were far away from the weird guys in their truck. That was when my girlfriend told me she understood Dutch. What they were saying to each other was, this isn't going to work. Let's go. So I was in my teens when this happened. I had been in a really dark place mentally and I met this guy through Snapchat. He told me his name was John, and he thought I was really pretty, and he seemed like a cool guy. He was pictures of super generic emo guy, and my tween heart was hooked. We talked for days and nights, and at one point, I told him the town I lived in. Because my parents worked late, I'd get home from school, and usually be by myself at home, and I'd sit in the living room, which had this big window facing the street. If you looked in, you could see people on the TV and stuff, and I always kept the curtains open for light. So about two weeks after John and I were talking, I noticed this white sedan drive slowly past my house at least once a day, usually right after I got home from school. I noticed that whenever I was watching something and texting John, he'd find a way to bring up the show into the conversation I didn't think much of it at first because usually it was shows I'd reblogged on my page before. That was until I started watching Pretty Little Liars on ABC Family. I hadn't posted or reblogged anything about the show. And then John started bringing it up, and I thought it was really weird. When I asked him about it, he said I seemed like the type of girl who watched it, so I dropped the issue. Fast forward two weeks, and I'm with some friends in a nearby park. I wasn't having a good day. So we decided to hang out, do photo shoots, whatever. So we were walking around and I turned my head and boom, there was that white sedan, except it's closer and I can see the person in it. It's this older guy, maybe in his 20s, just watching us. I got really uncomfortable, but I didn't bring it up. And then my friend suggested we go to the playground, which is right next to the parking lot. But at this point, none of my friends knew about the issue and I wanted to seem cool so I went along with it. We dicked around on the playground for a bit when I noticed the guy in the white sedan get out of his car and start walking towards us. My brain started trying to rationalize the situation. This can't be the same sedan that kept sitting outside and driving past my house. It can't be. And maybe the guy's just watching his kid or something. I wish that were the case. I went over to the water fountain to grab a drink and the guy comes up to me. Hi there. Uh, hi. You're... He said my Instagram handle, right? 
My blood went ice cold. Um, yeah, who are you? He smiled at me. This really wide grin. I'm John. I came to see you in person. You told me the town you lived in and how you wished we could meet. Listen, I, I gotta get back to my friends. No, 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 no. Why don't we take a drive? We can go to McDonald's. He grabbed my arm at this point, and I think one of my friends had noticed, because she came up to us and the John guy released me and started to back up. Hey, Lizzie, Mom said we gotta head home. Dad's home, and he had a long day. I nodded along and walked away with her. My whole group of friends were crowding me as we headed back to my house. I never told my parents what happened that day, and none of my friends did either. None of us wanted our Snapchats exposed, and we thought we'd get in trouble for what was happening, even though I was the only one at risk. When we got home, I blocked John and reported the account, thanking my friends for saving me. It's scary to think what could have happened if they hadn't been there, and I don't think the story would have had a happy ending.